So the team behind Procreate was kind enough to invite me to the Procreate 5 beta, which means that now I'll be able to create content for you that talks about all of the amazing features that are coming up with this latest update that is due for the end of this year. For today's video, we're going to be talking about animation and all of the animation features that are packed up on Procreate 5. So this is a video that you definitely do not want to miss. My name is Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper. So now let's get started. All right, now that we're here on Procreate 5 beta, let me show you how does the animation feature works here with this new update. So I've actually prepared three examples here for animation because I actually want to also show you how does the animation works in Procreate, uh, not only the new features, but how does the animation actually works. So uh, the very first example here, I've prepared a file with three layers. It's got three text layers, A, B, and C of different colors. And the main takeaway here is that Procreate understands that every layer equals one frame. So in order to get into the new set of tools for animation on Procreate 5, we have to go into the Actions menu and then into the Preferences, and we have to turn on Animation Assist. By turning on Animation Assist, we see a timeline here at the bottom, and you see that all of a sudden, all of our layers became quite transparent. That is the onion skin feature that is also new on Procreate 5. So here we have right away, we have a timeline and we can play your animation. We can see how our animation is actually flowing without having to go uh, in previous versions. We would have to go into the actions menu and then into share and then go into either of this animation options here, for example, animated GIFs. And you would have to uh, have to see your animation playing like super small here, almost as a thumbnail in order to be able to see that animation even playing before you could export it. So back here into the uh, canvas, we can also, uh, so again, we can play our animation here on the timeline. We can scrub the timeline. We can create new frames by just clicking on this plus button right here. And as you can see, once again, each layer equals a frame. It created a new layer for us. I'm just going to delete that. And finally, we can go into the settings here for this timeline panel, and we see that there is the frames per second. So I'm just gonna play this back and increase. So you can see the animation plays really fast or super slow. Procreate basically allows us to have animations up to 60, as high as 60 frames per second, or as low as one frame per second. I'm just gonna leave it at six. Then next, we have the onion skin feature which is right now set to 12. So we'll see about 12 transparency frames uh, from the current frame that we're on. So that's how Onion Skin works. It's a way for you to see the flow of your animation by adding transparency to the frames that come before and after your current frame, if that makes any sense. It will make more sense once we're actually looking at the last example, which will be a bouncing ball animation that I'm going to create here on Procreate 5. Then next we have the uh, onion skin opacity. I'm just gonna stop this for a second. And as you can see, the letters become more uh, transparent or more opaque if I increase or decrease the slider right here. Uh, you may actually want to see your uh, previous frames a little bit stronger, or you may actually want to just have a hint of these previous frames in order for you to uh, get a better uh, drawing of your current frame. That is really a matter of per personal preference. I'm gonna leave about 60% as default. Lastly, we have the option to blend the primary frame, which is something also interesting. Say you have a very strong um, onion skin here for the opacity, by setting this up as uh, turning this off as the blend primary frame, you don't see your current frame as transparent. So if I do turn that on, you see that every frame becomes transparent, a little bit transparent, including your current frame. This is as well a matter of personal preference here. Lastly, there are three modes to play back that animation. You can play it once, and I would say this is really useful for longer uh, timelines where you, you're really not interested in playing this again and again. You're just uh, wondering, maybe you're just playing a section here on the timeline where you're just like working in that section, or this is, uh, let's just say, like a, like a short film and uh, you're, you, you don't really want to play the whole animation over and over. But for short animations like this one, it's actually nice to leave it on loop, which is what we have right now. So we see our animation playing. And finally, what we had before was the ping pong mode, which plays from first frame to last 
and vice versa, so from last to first frame. So that about covers the simplest example here of how animation works in Procreate. Basically, once again, Procreate understands that every layer equals one frame. But now you might be wondering what about groups, and that's what I'm going to show you on our second example. So here on our second example, it does look a little bit more complex, and that is because now I've turned every layer into a group. So we still have A, B, and C, but now we have layers within um, each group. So we have elements such as this rectangle, we have a circle, triangles for the letter P, we have some red elements for the letter A, so on and so forth. So if I turn off these groups, you really see how many elements are within each group. So now the question is what happens once we turn the animation feature on? So let's just do that. So let's head back into the preference, the actions menu, and then preferences and turn on animation assist. We see that everything got a little bit transparent here because that is the, again, once again, the onion skin feature. We're gonna go into settings. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that on for, for a bit and I'm gonna leave it at six frames per second with a looping animation. So now if we play it, it's actually playing correctly, meaning that Procreate is actually understanding that each group is a frame. So that is the takeaway from this example, is that now uh, Procreate understands that each group equals a frame. And on the plus side, you can turn on and off things and they will not show up in your export or even on a timeline play. So is this useful? I do find it very useful if you create a new layer and for example, you're drawing a guide. So say like here, I'm, I'm gonna have my circle about here. I'm gonna have like a square that's gonna be around this parts right here. And you can draw a sketch layer and then you can turn that off and draw the, uh, the correct, uh, let's just say the finalized elements. And by turning off your guide layer, once you play back, it's playing without that guide layer on. So it's really useful actually to use groups whenever you're planning your animations. But now the third example is the difference between Procreate 4 and 5. And what I'm going to talk about now is the difference on having background and foreground layers. So now this is a very simple file here, uh, just showing you like there's a mid ground of mountains, there's a, there's a ground floor, and this blue line that you see here, these are actually all individual groups and the blue kind of box that you see here is actually a box traveling throughout the frame from uh, stage left to uh, stage right. So it, it kind of goes out of the frame and let's just go into the actions menu preferences, turn on animation assist. So before this is the Procreate 4 example here, uh, I, as you can see here, opening each group, I still have my floor uh, layer, my ground layer, and the, the mountains layer in every group. So what I'm trying to say here is that every layer that is static as the background, say the background's not moving, I would have to copy and paste on each frame, uh, therefore duplicating the number of frames, making the file heavier in order for it to be static and always here within the animation. So once we play this animation, we see the box is actually traveling uh, it's a, again, it's a very simple example here just to show you the differences. And now this is the Procreate 4 example, but now let's create a new example here, Procreate 5, so I can show you the differences. All right, so now we're here on the same file. I just made a duplicate of that file and I wanna show you the differences between four and five. So here on our timeline, we still have groups for the box component, but if I open uh, the groups here, you see that I only really have the box. I don't have the uh, mountains and the ground layer anymore. The mountains and ground layer are actually here at my bottom layer and it's just one instance. So what I wanna show you is that now when we click onto that layer, we see an option here saying animation background. And by clicking on that option, we're telling Procreate that we want to have that layer on for all times while this animation is playing. So now I'm gonna show you the differences. When I play this animation, explain correctly and we just saved a whole number of layers and made our file way lighter because now we only have one layer that's acting up as our animation background. So now I'm gonna pause this video. I'm gonna go back into the bottom layer here. I'm gonna turn that off and now watch what happens when I play. Procreate is just understanding again as that general rule that each layer is one frame. So it's only showing the mountains and ground layer for one frame. And that's not really what we want. So I'm gonna go again here on this layer, click and set it as animation background. So 
This is one of the powerful tools here on Procreate 5 is the ability to set one layer as animation background. And I'm just gonna pause this. And if I were to create another layer here, and I'm just gonna drag it all the way to the top. If I click on this layer right here, I do have the option to set it as animation foreground. So I don't really have a foreground element here in the scene. And I do want to move on to the next example where we're going to actually create a bouncing ball animation so you can see all of the features of the animation section here in Procreate 5. But this is just to show you how we're now saving way more time and uh, actually file size by having these two features on layers. Now let's move on to the last example where we're going to create a whole animation here on Procreate 5. So now that we're here on the animation file for Procreate 5, I've actually broken down this animation into three main sections. The first one is the background group, which as you can see contains a few layers that are separate layers. I have the foreground layer, which is just one of the leaves on the, sitting on the floor. And I have my animation layer, which I've called it the sketch layer. So then I move on to create the trajectory of my bouncing ball animation, and that is using a sketch layer. So what you see here is basically creating all of the keyframes that I'm later on going to draw with the finalized brush, but uh, I'm also going to actually merge all of these sketch layers into one layer because it will really serve for me just as a guide layer. This is also what we call the planning stage when making animations. So as you can see here as well, I've used a few methods to actually uh, create new keyframes uh, per se. One is to duplicate layers with gesture controls. The second method, I was just going into the layers panel and duplicating frames there. And the last method that you'll see once I'm actually finalizing the animation with the studio brush is that I will start using the plus sign, which is located at the bottom toolbar for the animation section. So by using that one, I definitely was the fastest when actually creating this animation. You'll see that uh, it will really start to pick up the pace because I'm basically drawing the shapes that I've already planned and I'm just using the plus sign to generate new uh, keyframes for me. So I do have to say that in conclusion, using this new feature for animation was way, way easier to build what I needed to make, which was this bouncing ball animation that you see on the screen. It was really uh, much easier to use. It was very intuitive to actually use the features such as the plus sign, actually working with onion skin, and it's definitely a huge improvement from the previous version of Procreate. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. And now my question for the comment section down below is, do you think that the animation feature is one of the most powerful things that are coming up with Procreate 5? Or do you have another feature that you're really looking forward to see with this latest update? Let me know in the comment section down below. Please leave a like to this video if you found this video helpful for you. Also a comment will be hugely appreciated, as well as subscribe to the channel for more news, tutorials, speed paint videos, and other general news on digital illustration, just so you can improve your skills as a digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.